Up next, we break down the latest happenings over in the livestock market. We're focusing this week on the cattle industry. On Wednesday morning, we traveled out to Seward to catch up with Mike Briggs of Briggs Feed Yard. We had several viewer questions submitted for Mike, plus a few questions of our own. I began the conversation by getting Mike's general take on the cattle market here in the middle of May. Well, it says we like to do, get your uh, first take on the cattle market. What are you seeing right now? We got a big kind of upheaval, kind of a roll over here. As usual, there's all kinds of causes and effects going on, but I think we're in the midst. We've, we've made our top for the spring like we typically do, and now we're headed down. And I think that's primarily due to actual supply of cattle. Everybody just kept thinking, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna lose numbers on feed and we're gonna, we're gonna run low on fat cattle. No. And the last report showed that. Everybody thought it was going to be 98% placements and it was 102. The drought is having a tremendous impact throughout this industry, but it's having a bigger impact on upfront beef supplies because there's so many cattle in the feed yards because there's not enough grass. You're going exactly where I want to take this conversation, Mike, because last time we talked to you, you were talking about how your feed yards, as we can see behind us, were full at the moment. Cattle on feed report shows, I think, 102% placement. We also look at, though, the state of the cattle industry. In January, we heard that the U.S. cattle inventory is dropping. So what does all that tell you about what we can expect next cattle on feed, and what's this look like long term? Great question. I, th I think the cattle on feed thing, as long as it stays dry, you're going to keep seeing placements of cattle. Now we had a little bit of rain. Hopefully it's more than just a stop gap. I'm afraid it's a stop gap, but hopefully it's more than that. So hopefully you see a significant slowdown in cow slaughter because we've had just huge liquidating numbers of cow slaughter now for going on three years. So eventually that will show up in lack of feeders. It just has not yet because these feeders have had to continually come to the feed yard and not get spread out through the, through the industry because of they, they're having something to graze on. You didn't have any wheat again this year because you didn't have any rain and now you don't have any grass and you're just gonna continue to see feed yard placements at a fairly significant rate, I'm afraid. Kind of an interesting story developing in box beef. In 2021, we saw that surging here in the, in the month of May. Fast forward where we're now at in 2022, we're below 2021 levels. What's that telling you about beef demand right now? I think beef demand is still really good, but you're seeing it's inflation. What typically carries your cutout is your middle meats, your high price meats, your tenderloins, your ribeyes. People have backed away from those higher price cuts. They're going to burger, which is fine. You can still eat meat, but that carries your cutout. So if the demand has diminished for these higher price cuts, that drags the whole cutout down. That doesn't necessarily indicate lost demand. It's a change of the product mix. You, people are not buying the higher price cuts and they're buying the cheaper cuts. That's really what I think it says at this point. Yeah, there'll come a time where you'll see that that means demand is bad, but I don't think we're there yet. But if this inflation thing doesn't slow down, we'll probably get there. You mentioned inflation. Oftentimes the inflation number is just something kind of up in the sky, but when you look at that on your operation, what are some of the real things you're considering when it comes to a large increase in inflation we've seen uh, here in 2022? You know, you've had to be out in front on this corn thing. We've talked about that every time I've been on. If you're gonna buy cattle, you better buy your corn. And if you didn't do that, you've gotten bloodied up a little bit by that. I think that's a situation that's gonna continue. Um, fuel costs. My gosh, they're just terrible. So, and, and the wage pre the wage inflation pressure has been nothing short of tremendous. We don't have enough people willing to work in this country. That's just all there is to it. And feed yard work is about as close to work as you can probably get anymore because there's not a lot of computer work. There's not a lot of desk time, it's work. And so you've, we've all had trouble keeping and retaining and getting new employees. And so you've seen tremendous wage pressure there. So it's been tough for me. It's really been hard on our margins. I want to make sure I get to a couple of viewer questions. Had a couple of them come this week. First one has to do with recession. How quickly will the beef market fall if we do go into recession? That's a great question. <laughs> All the outside factors affect beef constantly. I think you're going to, it's going to put pressure on it. Here's my concern with recession and the cattle supply. You, you're going like this. You got inflation going up and cow supply going like this. At some point, you will see reduced feedlot placements. Therefore, meat will eventually go higher just on lack of supply, not be getting pushed up by demand like it has been. It's going to get to a lack of supply. 
I'm afraid of that because I'm afraid it's going to get really high and it's going to come out of people's diets and I never want to see that. So there's, there's a real concern there. Now you're going to say, well, if you have inflation and high cattle prices, cattle feeder is going to be doing good. Not necessarily, not if all the inputs stay high and things like that. I, and and the, the competition between feedlots to have inventory. I, there's, there's nothing good. There's a lot of stuff out there where there's a big dark cloud right now that really makes me nervous. Second viewer chimed in, want to get your thoughts on a recent hearing that happened in Washington, D.C. Regarding the beef industry, we had the big four meatpacking CEOs testifying to in front of Congress. They wanted to know, do you think we'll see some transformational change coming out of some of this ag policy, or is this all talk? Your thoughts? You know, that's a great question. They had this at NCBA. We had the big vote on some, um, some things, and we got voted down by Texas and Kansas. Texas and Kansas are primarily corporate industries that are tied into the Packers. They don't want their marketing agreements taken away from them. We're up here in the Midwest in Nebraska and Iowa, a lot of sole proprietorships, a lot of family operations, a lot of non-corporate deals that still want to sell on the cash market. And I'm a big proponent of the cash market. If you don't have cash, what can you base any prices off? If there's no cash market, what are the futures even there for? So you've got to have a cash market and it really disappoints me that the corporates down south don't see that or, and or care, in my view. Is there going to be real structural change in this industry? Yeah, but I don't know that it's going to come the way you want because I'm afraid you're going to see such a low supply of feeder cattle, you're going to see such tremendous demand for it, the people that were on the margins are going to, they're going to go away. And unfortunately, it may force some of us that don't want to, to be in an arrangement with a packer just so that we can survive. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope, I'm a big proponent of the, of the Fisher, of the Fisher legislation. I hope they can get it done. Um, but, you know, they want to see a consensus. And it's pretty hard to get a consensus when you're two, two of your biggest cattle feeding states don't want it. So that's a problem. I, I think there is going to be change, but I don't know if it's the change you're going to want to see. It's hard to say. You know, you talk about the packing industry. Yeah, we need more competition. Well, do you break them all up? Well, when I got into this industry, there was probably 15 or 20 packers, and they all slowly went away. Now, you could say, well, that's because the other guys bought them out. And yeah, maybe the government should have stepped in at some point and said, whoa, 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 this is getting, you guys are getting too big. We have that in a lot of industries. Um, the only way you, break, you do that is break that up. I have no idea how that looks. So there's a lot of things, there's a lot of tumult here in my mind, and I'm not sure where it's going to go. But it's going to force you as a businessman to watch your P's and Q's or you're not going to be around. Well, let's wrap up this conversation, Mike, as we always like to do with your final thoughts and your risk management advice, particularly for those cattle feeders out there. I think you need to have it. Here's what I, I think we've, we've topped the market. I think we're headed down for a long pull this summer. You've got inflation. You've got massive cattle supplies. These cattle are still really big, even though we're feeding $8 corn, which is a little curious. But a lot of that is because of Mother Nature being really nice to us and we've had good performance. But I think the cattle market's in trouble here till we probably get through September. And then I think you get into the fourth quarter and I think things will start to get better. I think next spring will be really good, which it says that on the board. They've got fat cattle at $1.60 for next spring. So I think there's some things there, but you always got to remember when you've got that big carry in that fat cattle market, they're, they're fishing for cattle and usually they get it done. So when you get there, it's not where it was advertised. So I think you've got to be real careful with your risk management and my gosh, buy your corn. Bonus question on the topic of corn. So far in 2022, I think you've hit every projection you've made. In 2022, early in the year, we talked about the price of corn. You said it was going up. It did so. Last time we talked to you, you talked about, eh, we usually always get one of these rains to, to help the crop get started in April. That happened. What's your crystal ball tell you this time about the, the price of corn, where we're going? My real fear is that we got our rain and it's that's it. I, that's my real fear. I think it's so dry. Droughts feed on themselves. You know, we were supposed to have rain last night. Didn't happen. Um, these, these things feed on themselves. I, I am really concerned we're going forward. I think corn's gonna go higher. I say corn trades nine bucks before it's all said and done. All right, we'll see what happens. Mike, always appreciate your time. Thanks for coming back on Market Journal. Thank you.